You know, everybody likes the classic cocktails. I love the classic cocktails. Everybody knows the classic cocktails or tried the classic cocktails. But if you want to bring something new to the game, if you want to bring that extra wow effect or hear your guests say to you like, what, you did this, you made this, what, you're so cool, then you will have to go into the kitchen, my friend. Because today I will show you how to make three of my favorite homemade syrups. Let's go. Before I start, let me show you the tools that you will need to make those syrups. First of all, very important is heat. We're going to need some heat to dissolve the sugar and extract the flavors and aromatics of the ingredients that we are going to use. Uh, a pot is uh, perfect also for that. Uh, we're gonna need a scale to measure the weight of sugar, petals and chilies and so on. Uh, over here we have some measuring cup to measure the amount of liquid for our syrup, uh, which will be water today. Um, we're gonna need a funnel and a strainer when the syrup is already cooked and ready to strain. And a beautiful bottle. The first syrup I would love to show you is a blue pea and lavender syrup. It is a syrup that will not only taste like spring, like lavender, but it will also get a very beautiful color from the blue pea. So to do our syrup, we have measured 500 mils of filtered water and 500 grams of uh, super fine sugar. Always make sure to measure your sugar by weight and not by volume. So to start, we're going to add the 500 mils of water. Before I add the sugar, I always preheat my water just before the boiling point, And in this way, I will save some energy. Now time to add 500 grams of sugar. So this syrup is basically one part sugar and one part water. It might sound a lot to you guys, but we're going to use uh, just like 20 mils in a cocktail, meaning that uh, in the cocktails that we are making, we're going to add something like 10 grams of sugar. And now I will add 10 grams of lavender. Dried lavender, that is. And five grams of blue pea tea. That is a blue tea from Southeast Asia that is uh, not really going to affect the flavor of our cocktail or of our syrup, but it will add this beautiful bluish color that will then change when we add acidity to the cocktail. So this color will match perfectly with the aromatics of the lavender and it's going to basically increase that lavender sensation through the eyes, if that makes sense. Gently heat the syrup until the sugar dissolves. Now leave your stove uh, on around 80 degrees for five minutes to extract all of those um, aromatics from the lavender and all of the color from the blue pea. After you're done cooking your syrup, you can leave it to cool down and then strain it into a bottle. Okay, now that the syrup has cooled down, time to strain it into a bottle or some type of a container. If you want to do a second filtration, which uh, will be necessary because you have some small bits from the lavender inside the syrup, then I recommend using a another container and a coffee filter or a cheesecloth. The cool thing about the coffee filter is that you can basically wash it and reuse it. And I think it's also less messier. So that's why I prefer a coffee filter. And now basically pour the syrup through the coffee filter just to filter out those small little bits inside the syrup. Now, after the syrup has been strained, time to show you something really cool about it. And that is to pour some syrup, right? And then add some lemon or any type of acidity will basically change its color. 
pretty cool, right? Now let's go to the next one. Things are gonna get spicy now as we are making the Thai chili syrup. First, let's put some heat on our stove and add 500 ml of filtered water. And while the water is heating, I will chop my chilies. Finally, just try to cut them in small pieces because this way you will extract even more heat. Now let's add the chilies and when the water is heated let's add 500 grams of sugar. Now I will let the syrup simmer like this on low temperature for around 5 minutes. Chilies can have different spiciness. Uh, I think that with four red Thai chilies and this amount of sugar and water, you will achieve the desired spiciness. But if your chili syrup um, turns out to be too spicy, then uh, add some simple syrup to reduce that spiciness. Or if it's not spicy enough, just try it and then add some more chili. After it's done simmering, I will remove it out of the stove and let it cool down before I strain it. Now that our chili syrup has cooled down, it's ready to strain. Again, using a glass bottle, a funnel, and both a strainer and a coffee filter. So what I'm doing, I will place the big strainer over the coffee filter so that the strainer takes out the, the, bigger, the bigger seeds and parts of the chili and the coffee filter takes out the small pieces. So it's kind of a double filtration if you like. This syrup is so simple but your guests and you as well will love it. I mean we all eat spicy food and spicy soups and so on but uh, many people haven't really thought about a spicy cocktail so they're like super super impressed when they taste one. And there you have it a nice spicy Thai chili syrup. The third syrup that I would like to show you is quite unique in flavor and it includes rose petals that will not only add a floral aroma to the syrup but also a beautiful color. And the second ingredient are cinnamon flowers and those are the dried unripe fruits of the cassia cinnamon tree and have a unique fine and light cinnamon flavor. They also look a bit like cloves but they have a quite a different aroma. If you can't find those, then you can use a regular cinnamon stick or another thing is tonka bean that will also work pretty well in this syrup. Let's start by adding 500 ml of water into our pot and turn on the heat. I really love two-dimensional syrups like this who include two different types of aromatics because when you add such a syrup to your cocktail, automatically your cocktail will be a two-dimensional or even three-dimensional one and it will taste uh, basically more complex and more pleasing and people will be very amazed. When you see small bubbles in the water, that means it's preheated and it's time to add 500 grams of sugar followed by 20 grams of dried rose petals and five grams of our cinnamon flowers. And now let's stir to help to dissolve the sugar. If you don't stir, it might stick to the pot and caramelize and basically ruin your syrup. So make sure that you stir the mixture occasionally. This one doesn't have to cook. Just let it simmer for around five minutes on low temperature. After five minutes, turn off the heat and let the syrup to sit at least for a couple of hours because I've noticed that roses release this beautiful red color after time. So it will need three, four, even maybe five hours in order to the syrup be completely finished and ready to strain. A couple of hours later, our syrup is done. I have left it to sit for probably five hours just to extract more flavor and aroma out of my ingredients. If the syrup turns out to be too strong in flavor and aroma for you, you can always use simple syrup to basically cut down the flavor and adjust it to your personal taste or cocktails. 
And now to strain it, uh, again I'm using both, both of my strainers, one coffee filter and one regular strainer, placing the regular strainer on top of the coffee filter and pouring this deliciousness. Here you can use a spoon to extract more syrup because the, basically the rosebuds they have um, taken, they have basically sucked up some of the syrup. So by pressing it on the top, you will be able to extract more of that syrup. Man, look at those colors! Beautiful! And they also taste so good. It won't take you much time and effort, so you should definitely give it a try as the result will be so pleasing. That I promise. We also plan to put out different episodes using those ingredients in the future of our channel. So make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Peace.